Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. I did get quite a few requests for this video, so I guess here it is. This video is all about my general Aroid mix that I use for mainly my Monstera, my Philodendron and some of my Anthuriums as well. So in this video, I'm going to break down the recipe I use, but I'm also going to explain very briefly each ingredient so you can basically see why it's in there because I don't think it's very useful to just give you an Aroid mix and a recipe and say go do this and not really understand what goes into these mixes and why it actually helps your plants. So I'm going to break down the ingredients I use, give a very brief description of you know why they're useful or why they're in there and I will of course give you the recipe for my Aroid mix so you can mix it yourself. So a quick breakdown of what is in my mix. So to start off we have good old orchid bark. You can buy this in a lot of places. You can actually buy this in a lot of pet shops or reptile shops. It's not too difficult to get a hold of and you can of course grab it on Amazon as well. So there's actually two pretty decent reasons why we use orchid bark. The first reason is aeration of the soil. So basically think of it this way, the roots of our plants like to breathe just as much as we do, if that makes any sense. So by using orchid bark, a really chunky mixture, you can help aerate the soil and just generally let the oxygen travel through the soil so it's not all one big, you know, compacted mound of stuff. So we use orchid bark to help with that and just generally break up the mixture. Not only that, I feel like a lot of people don't actually know this, but a chunkier mix of soil actually encourages a plant to grow basically stronger roots. So if you just have your plant in, say, for example, pure coir, so whatever it is, it's reasonably draining, but it's a very fine mixture, you will get more roots that are thinner and more hair-like. Whereas if you try and put your plant in a more chunkier medium, the roots have to adapt. Plants in general are built to adapt to a certain degree. So what will happen is if you have a chunkier mixture, your plant will adapt and try and grow hardier roots around these chunks in the substrate. So basically the orchid bark that we're going to use in our mix helps with aeration, but it also helps produce stronger roots in your plant. Also on the list, we have good old Koya, also known as Kwa. If you say it like I do, you can't stop me. That's how I want to pronounce it. Generally, when you get your Koya, the chunkier, the better. However, honestly, most often than not, you do find the finer mixes. So the mix I'm going to use is going to account for that. But if you can find a more coarse Koya, then please do use it, you know, instead of the one that I use in the mix, because it will be just a little bit better for the plant. So why do we use Koya? Well, it degrades a lot slower than a potting mix does and it also stays a little bit drier than a potting mix does. Now, I hate potting mix, okay? It is the worst thing ever. In my opinion, for aroids, it is the worst thing ever. And I will show you why. Basically, a lot of these potting mixes come and I think they have like a sprinkle of perlite in them. They might have a little bit of coir in them. They've got a couple of things in there, but generally you will notice the difference in this mix to my mix. And it is a vast difference just based on site alone. If I had, you know, a cheeky little bit of potting mix in a plant pot or whatever, and I tried to rinse it through with water, you know, let it drain and come back to the soil. Even if I came back an hour later, you'd be left with, the best way I can describe it guys is sludge. And that is going to kill your aroid faster than anything is sludge. We do not want sludge. So I do not recommend potting mix for that reason. So we use Koya. It is much slower to break down and it generally stays a little bit drier than potting mix. We still use it for moisture, shall we say, but it's a little bit more of a controlled level of moisture than what potting mix would be. We also have perlite, which I personally do not like. However, I do use it because, well, the plants need it. But we use perlite, generally speaking, for moisture control and a little bit of drainage as well. Now you could use perlite, you could actually use pumice stones in this mix. Perlite is much easier to get a hold of though. The only real difference between pumice and perlite is that perlite over time can kind of float up to the top of your mixture. So I guess it doesn't stay as mixed as well, whereas pumice would. But generally speaking, if it's in the middle of growing season and you're you know, repotting your plants reasonably often, I suppose, it's really not going to be an issue. It's probably only an issue if it's in something that just, you know, it's going to be in that mixture for 
for a long time. Otherwise, honestly, I would use perlite. If you want to use pumice though, that's absolutely fine. So the next ingredient that I use in my mix is activated charcoal. Now, basically, activated charcoal is going to be the filter for our soil. It is going to filter out the impurities. Now, I didn't know this until I looked up, you know, activated charcoal in plants. It's not something I knew about. I, I genuinely had to research this and I don't know how much proof to this that there is. So I'm kind of telling you now, but from what I know about activated charcoal, it saps out any impurities that build up in your soil over time. So it maintains a good pH balance in your soil. So you do definitely want to pick activated charcoal and not charcoal because there is actually a difference. So activated charcoal is basically regular charcoal that has been treated to become more oxygenated, which means it has more oxygen inside it, which means that it is more porous, which means that it will suck out the impurities of your soil generally just more efficiently. So it is a better filter the normal carbon. I question how much normal carbon or charcoal really works. So my recommendation is to go with activated charcoal. Generally, the charcoal I use in this video is a little bit too fine. So if you can get a chunkier charcoal than what I'm using, go for it. And my last ingredient is my natural fertilizer that I use, and that is none other than worm castings. And when I say castings, I mean poop. It is worm poop. The manufacturer of my worm castings tried really hard not to say worm poop on their packaging, which I thought was a little bit amusing, to be honest. So now you understand what each ingredient is and what it does, we can now build our potting mix. So first up, our orchid bark at 25%, so we get some good aeration in there and the encouragement of meteor roots. We then have 20% of coir, making sure that it's not, you know, too moist and not, not moist enough, so there's just enough to hold that moisture that we need in the soil. Following that with 25% perlite, so we make sure that we get really good drainage to balance out that coir in there. And at 10%, we have charcoal, our filter for our soil. Last but not least, our natural fertilizer, which are worm castings at 10%. So to make this mix, I usually put all the ingredients into a bowl and mix them around. Now I am wearing blue gloves. Literally, there is zero reason for that. It's just much easier to do this when I'm filming, you know, if I have to touch cameras or whatever. First thing we put in is our 25% orchid bark straight in with coir at 20%. Following that with perlite at 25%, so it matches the level of the orchid bark. Then we have our 10% charcoal. Again, if you can find a more coarse mix, go for it. And last but not least, our 10% worm castings. So now that we have our mix in our lovely big bowl, we just take a lovely spoon and we just churn that up to get a good mix so the mix is all worked through and everything is balanced. So here is the final product, our made up mixture. This is what my Aroid mix generally looks like. Yes, it is very chunky. Yes, there is a lot of perlite, but honestly, for Aroids, this is needed. It is very, very important. You can see there huge chunks of orchid bark. You can't really see the coir or the worm castings, but of course you can definitely see the perlite. Maybe a keen eye among you can see some of the pieces of charcoal as well. Now I want to very briefly cover something that I call top dressing. So basically what I put on top of this soil, I can do one of two things. One, and the thing I usually do, is I place a layer of orchid bark on the top of this mixture, mainly, to be honest, because I have a little bit of a gnat problem. I don't find that it keeps the gnats away, but it certainly deters them from getting down to that soil. So I maybe place about an inch of orchid bark on the top. Plus it looks quite nice, to be honest. It's quite decorative. It hides the perlite because I'm really not about that perlite life. So if you hate perlite, try a layer of orchid bark on the top. Now, one thing you could also do is do a top dressing of sphagnum moss. And I'm gonna explain now very quickly why this is useful. So sphagnum moss locks in a ridiculous amount of moisture. Now, we don't use this in the soil because it would just make the plant too moist. Trust me, I've been there, it's not fun. But what we can do is we can place it on the top and I will tell you why. So in a drier home or in a drier climate, the soil from your substrate, your potting mix, is going to evaporate much faster. If you put sphagnum moss on the top of your pot and around the stem of your plant, maybe one, maybe two inches up your stem, what that will do is that is going to lock the moisture in the substrate 
without basically soaking through the substrate. So it will basically stop the moisture from the soil evaporating anywhere near as fast. So if you have a problem with you know low humidity on your home, do try that because it really makes all the difference in keeping that moisture in the soil without having to you know water it more or flush it through more or have to have a moisture mix. Try that instead of making your substrate mix more absorbent. So what happens if you do not have the ingredients for this mix? Because honestly there are a lot of ingredients there you know and they're not always to hand. I've had a lot of scenarios where I haven't been able to just get that mix because I'm missing an ingredient or whatever have you but I have a house plant that just needs repotting for whatever reason I don't recommend this as a good mixture I'm recommending this mixture as like a temporary mixture until you find your ingredients what I use is roughly 50% perlite and 50% houseplant potting mix and that is because you can find perlite in most places and you can find potting mix in most places if you can't use perlite go for pumice it, pumice tends to be a little bit more expensive if you can't find any of that literally go for fine gravel anything that will aerate that soil and just stop as much moisture from being held in the soil you know it's not a recommended mix for your aroids but it will keep them alive and not kill them until you get the rest of your ingredients before i love you and leave you i would just like to give you three quick tips or three points to consider when making this mix because believe it or not this might change the composition of the mix that you make using these ingredients it's actually quite important so the first thing we need to consider is that my environment is not the same as your environment. So my environment generally, I think in here is 25 degrees and this particular room is about 50%. Other rooms are about 65. I think my office is about 70. It's a little bit ridiculous in there. But what I'm trying to say is different levels of temperature and humidity will have an effect on how quickly that moisture will evaporate from the soil. So you might find, for example, as I mentioned before, that sphagnum moss on the top might really help lock in that extra moisture for you if you're in a drier climate or a hotter climate. So that is definitely something you should consider. Not only that, but I happen to be an overwaterer. So I water my plants too often and I water my plants too much. I just love them to death and it's not good. It's really not good. If you are not an overwaterer, you might not need quite as much perlite, for example. Maybe you can dial it back a little bit to find, you know, a balance that suits you and suits your watering style. So so please also bear that in mind when making this mix. You might recreate my mix lovingly and faithfully and it might not work 100% for you. Your aroids might be drying out a little bit too quickly. If that is the case, you could still try the sphagnum moss trick or of course you could maybe lessen the perlite a little bit. Don't take these numbers right here as absolute gospel. If it doesn't quite work for you, feel free to tweak it and just make it work for you basically. Last but not least, and this is super important because this is going to vary massively across each plant you pot and that is to consider the roots of the current plant that you're going to use for this mix and what I mean by that is you know obviously monstera have chunkier roots some philodendron have finer roots I don't necessarily mean that I just mean like if it's a bit more of a rehab plant say you're saving this plant from root rot that you didn't know that you had please be aware of that and perhaps, perhaps if you're recovering from root rot, maybe add a little bit more perlite, say, or more orchid bark, just to get the drainage levels and the aeration levels a little bit higher than what they have previously been and the roots will probably recover a little bit faster. It'll also help them to dry back out a little bit. So consider your roots and possibly adapt the mixture to fit your situation a little bit better. And that is everything you need to know about my general Aroid mix for most of my Aroids. There are some exceptions, I think mainly my Queen Anthurium. That is more of a moss situation going on, but this is your general multi-purpose mix for most Aroids. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have a great mix that you use for your Aroids, then please do leave it in the comments. I would quite like to see what everybody else does because obviously this is just my mix. Everyone has different mixes. Everyone has different things that work for them in their climate. So if you want to share your mix, feel free to do so down below. Also, if you have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comments and either myself or somebody else will be sure to help you out. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and I shall see you next week. Bye.